I want you to say, but you know. Uh, of course, we're going to have a hashtag, so if you want to um, tweet your outrage or compliments or revelations or whatever, um, you can use the hashtag OS Empathy, and then I can look at it later and see if you like me or really, really like me or didn't like me at all. Uh, my name is Karanda Adair. Uh, it's pronounced Karanda, kind of like there's an extra syllable, uh, or sometimes I'll put an apostrophe in there. Um, but yeah, it's actually three syllables. I know it doesn't look like it. <coughs> um, I am at Karanda on Twitter, uh, thanks to an assist from a friend of mine uh, who helped me grab that from the one person who had one tweet four years ago with at Karanda. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so I, I was F and EPDX, so I recently switched to Akronda. My site is Akronda.com, where I blog uh, no less than twice a year. Um, I'm hoping to double that year, this year. And uh, I am uh, a native Oregonian. I was born in Eugene. Uh, I was basically raised in Portland. Um, a few years ago, I got tired of sort of retail life and project management, and I decided to go into web development. And so I went to school, and um, I started at PCC. I went to the Art Institute. I graduated in uh, 2011, fall of 2011. And I've been working as a web developer for about the past three years. Uh, and I have prepared for this talk, or actually, um, I'm, I'm married to this awesome woman right here, Jessica. And um, we don't dress like that all the time, but it's not, <laughs> it's not for lack of me trying. Um, so. Uh, we kind of race to see who gets to wear what first. Um, and I have prepared for this talk by living for 42 years as a gay black woman in uh, the whitest large city in America. <laughs> so 2% uh, is where we're at at 2011 and uh, getting whiter all the time. <laughs> um, and, and I've watched this happen. I've watched my family move from the neighborhoods where we grew up to, you know, outer Portland, Vancouver. Um, I've watched Alberta neighborhood chain. I've, wa I've watched Mississippi change. Um, and, you know, I, I like some of that. Like, the, it's cool to have, like, trendy places, but it's kind of not cool to just always be the only black person. Um, but it is what it is. <clears throat> so, um, so I want to talk to you about empathy. And... Um, Here's the basic definition of empathy, the ability to understand and share the feelings of someone else. It's not all about you. Um, and actually, I want to know a little bit about you before I go any further. So just curious, do I, are there any developers? Developers in the room? OK. Front end? Back end? Cool. OK. Um, designers? Bloggers? Okay. Um, people who just consider yourselves makers of some kind, creative types. Okay. Cool. All right. So um, the thing about getting into this industry is that I knew I was going into sort of this, you know, white male dominated industry and like that's an intellectual exercise when you're in school and then you get out of school and you start interacting and, and experiencing uh, tech culture. And I'm talking about tech culture, but really it's not just tech culture, it's, it's all culture, right? It's US culture, it's world culture. Like the lack of, the, of empathy is a problem. <clears throat> and uh, I don't know if you guys remember this guy. Um, so Rob Portman is a, a Republican senator from Ohio, and he recently changed his mind about gay marriage because his son came out. So now there was, you know, there's, when there's votes on gay marriage, he's decided that um, gay people are people now and they should be able to get married. <clears throat> and what he said was, uh, knowing that my son is gay prompted me to consider the issue from another perspective, that of a dad who wants all three of his kids to lead happy, meaningful lives with the people they love, a blessing Jane and I have shared for 26 years. And that's great, right? I mean, a lot of people kick their kids out of the house if, when they come out and that's terrible. And so it's good that he loves his son. But this is a guy who makes policy, right? For thousands, billions of people. And so there's a basic problem when he can only empathize with someone who's directly in his circle, who's someone he loves. Like that's, that's like kindergarten empathy, right? It's like, it's just, it's like his, you know, his family. And so the problem with that is, right, 
you know. <laughs> this is great, but if we can't if we can't just like widen the circle, then then it's it's bad for everybody else, right? What are, what are the rest of us supposed to do? All right, so why why are we talking about this? Um, this talk was uh, germinated during an incident that a lot of people on the internet know as Pygate. Uh, and I'm not going to talk about Pygate specifically. It doesn't really matter what that is. Uh, what it is is an instance of a phenomenon that keeps going on and on and on, time after time. So I wrote a little example of that. <coughs> um, so here we have a <laughs> we have like a basic function, right? PHP. So we've got oppression, and as arguments, we, we need an event, and then a reaction to it, and then some backlash. So something happens. Somebody does something mean to somebody else, right? And then you have all these different types of back, backlash that can result. Um, so it's an array. It could be insults, it could be verbal abuse, it could be death threats, doxing, rape threats, like, you know, a bunch of stuff that's not even on that list. So any of the reaction, somebody does something shitty, somebody else says, hey, you really shouldn't be mean. Like, that's not cool, why don't you stop? And then I, I wrote a while loop. And, you know, I don't think a lot of programmers actually use while loops, because the problem with the while loop is that you have to end it on purpose, right? Normally in a while loop, you would have a thing that happens, you know, while something is true, this thing happens, and then you end it, right? Down here, uh, this is commented out because it, it doesn't ever seem to end. So the event happens, you get the backlash, which is usually like way bigger than the original, please stop, <laughs> you know, like victim blaming, like wackiness ensues. And then it just keeps repeating in a loop. <clears throat> so, um, so this week, or maybe last week, Here's, here's the latest you know, example that I found. Uh, Anita Sarkeesian, awesome uh, video documentary maker, um, someone who works in the video game space, made a video about just the roles of women in video games. Tweeted this incendiary uh, thought here about, she's bummed that there's no female protagonist in any of the new Xbox games. And uh, so this is what happened. And these are the replies from Twitter that she got. She posted these on a, on a Tumblr post. They're not very nice. <clears throat> this one uh, calls her out to check her privilege, which I thought was interesting <laughs> and ironic. Um, the privilege, I guess, of being a woman in video game culture and getting assaulted um, verbally. And uh, so, so this is what happens over and over and over and over again. And um, Geek Feminism has a wiki, and they actually have a timeline of incidents. And you can go and you can see these things dating back to 1973. Sexist incidents in tech. And I'm sure they have only captured, you know, a small fraction of what actually goes on, like things that make it into the larger consciousness. <clears throat> um, so, so you have this like endless loop, and uh, and you know nobody seems to learn from our mistakes. Like collectively, we're not moving forward. So last month, I um, I went to DrupalCon. Because uh, I used to work in Drupal a lot, and it was in Portland. And uh, so one of the keynote speakers rolled out this pretty tired meme. And how that goes is, you know, you're talking and you need an example. And the example of the tech-savvy developer person is, you know, Bob. You know, standard developer dude. And the example of the person who just doesn't get it, can't understand, it's too hard, is your mom. And this was the third year in a row that a keynote speaker at DrupalCon has done this meme on stage. And now instead of listening to the content of whatever the speaker is talking about, which is probably good information, uh, a lot of people are angry, they're tweeting, they're distracted, 
Um, you know, so you're, you're basically alienating your audience. And um, not, not the least of which are all the moms who are at DrupalCon with their babies, <laughs> um, who are developers. Um, one of the core maintainers of Drupal 7 just adopted a baby. And she's pretty technical. So this is a stereotype that persists. Um, so, and it's not just like, oh, it's just the mean people, it's just the rapists, it's just the, the misogynist. Uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of nice people who don't always get it. Um, and you know, you can have the best intentions, but if you if you can't sort of like widen your horizon and see things from a different perspective, then you can end up doing more more harm. So, I don't want you to leave here totally depressed. I don't think it's all doom and gloom. I think that there's starting to be progress, right? There's starting to be sort of this realization that like, hey, maybe tech should be like more than straight white men who drink beer and play foosball and like whatever that, you know, that developer stereotype, you all know what it is, right? So I really love this organization, Black Girls Code. Um, Kimberly Bryant is literally just like building the next generation of, of STEM professionals. Um, and she runs uh, workshops for girls who are 7 to 17. And they've been doing this all over the country. And they're participating in Google Summer of Code. Um, and I, I actually tweeted one day. I was bored at work. And I wondered, am I really the only black female developer in Portland? So I, I tweeted that. And kind of the answer I got back was yes. <laughs> um, I met a lot of nice new people on Twitter. Um, Scott Hanselman retweeted me, and all of a sudden my Twitter blew up because he has like a zillion followers. Um, but yeah, a lot of the a lot of the developers of color who were tweeting back to me were in LA or Atlanta or Europe. Um, so I, I'm hoping that you know, with Kimberly's help, like that's that's going to change something. Um, Revision Path is a pr fairly new site, and what he does is just showcase uh, developers of color. And so he does interviews. Um, he did an interview with me that's, uh, that's up that went up like three weeks ago, maybe. Um, and so that's awesome, because it's kind of getting a, a wider vision, right, of who can be in this industry. Um, and then there's all sorts of, you know, a lot of times when we talk about diversity in, in tech, it's like women. We've got to get more women. And, and we do. That's, that's cool. So there's a lot of groups like Pi Ladies and Rails Girls and and things that are uh, that have sprung up, <clears throat> so um, so this is good because uh, the future of tech um, is not really sustainable as like this vision, right? Like that's a company photo, um, and it's from a company that probably a lot of you know. Uh, and GitHub, uh, as far as I know, is a distributed company, which means they hire. They can literally hire people from anywhere in the world, and yet their team still looks like this. So that is kind of something that makes you go, hmm. Like, if anybody's old enough to remember Arsenio Hall, things that make you go, hmm. Um, so what we want to do is get out of diversity kindergarten and like move into the first grade, right? So the first thing that I think we have to do is we got to realize that we, we kind of live in a bubble, right? Everybody is in their own little bubble, and it just consists of whatever your your world is. You know, you're a woman, or you you know your gender, your race, or where you live. Like, there's things about you that shape your worldview, and <clears throat> that's fine. Like, that's normal. Everybody has that. Um, but you need to be aware of your bubble because everybody else's bubble is different. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so. The idea is to be able to like peek out of your bubble and like get get to know some other people, some different people, uh, and and find some different viewpoints. So let's talk about some definitions. Um, you're all here, so you probably have a basic understanding of these two things: marginal, marginalization versus privilege. Right? Privilege basically means you have the wind at your back, like things are easy. Um, anything that you think of where you're just kind of a default group, you know, you're you're right-handed, you're, you know, you're a guy, like 
it, those are the things where it's just like, you just kind of move along with your life and you don't really think about it, right? Whereas if you fall into one of these marginalized groups, then things are a little bit tougher. Like you just generally work a little bit harder at life sometimes. Um, and the thing about this, the marginalized group, is that you don't just get to be a person, right? You, you get to be person with modifier. So you get to be a, a woman developer or, you know, a black developer or what have you. Like, I don't think I've ever heard anybody ask what the white community thinks about George Bush, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> the white community is just... <laughs> It's just people, right? It's just like individuals. And I didn't put it in my slide, but there's a there's a X, I think it's X XKCD with like, you know, two two people doing math, you know, math is hard, and it's like the guy was like, Oh, you suck at math, and with the woman it's like, oh, girls suck at math, right? So you have this this sort of uh, pressure of representing your your group uh, as part of a marginalized group. And you can't really escape from this. That what happens is like the people, people in these groups tend to know a lot more about the people in these groups because, like, the default, right? Like, it's everywhere. You can't even escape it. Like, maybe one day I'm like, you know, I'm gonna stop reading angry articles on the internet. I'm gonna go relax. I'm gonna get a movie, right? But there's no, there's no real escaping from this because what happens when you go to the movies? Well. This is a, an article on NPR from four days ago. 90%, the percentage of showings of films today in a 10 mile race, radius in Washington, DC, are stories about men or groups of men where women play supporting roles or fill out ensembles, primarily, primarily focused on men. So even in our entertainment, it's really hard to get away from this ever present fact that like, oh, you're just not quite fully part of society. Right? You're not represented anywhere. So, <clears throat> so one of the results of, you know, if you're not in a marginalized group and you're thinking like everything is great, and, and that can lead to this question. <laughs> like, man, what is your problem? Why are you so angry? You're spaced off about everything. Stop reading the internet. Like, why? And I, I kind of have a, re a revelation about this recently because, you know, as a black female, you know, lesbian living in Portland, like, I could be angry all the time if I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I could just walk around punching people, like, and it would, you know, um, for a little while, right. There would probably be consequences, right? But, um, but again, it's the bubble. Like, my bubble is filled with, like, all these things coming at me other people have no idea about, right? So I realized like, they really don't understand why you're so angry. So this is, this is a friend of mine. This is one of my old teachers from school. He found out about this Tumblr, Stop Telling Women to Smile. And it's a Tumblr about street harassment. And it's, it's great. It's like this guy goes around taking pictures of people holding up signs with messages to men who harass women on the street, right? And there's probably not a woman in this room who has not experienced street harassment, you know, hey baby, blah, 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 right? He has no idea, no idea. He's like a grown man living in, you know, battleground, married kids, no idea, literally. So you can't know what you don't know. So I had this revelation and it was, it was I don't know, it was a big, it was a big deal. So, um, so now I'm going to do two things. I haven't done one of these talks before, so I decided to do something like experimental. So I'm going to do um, I'm going to do a, an experiment, and then I'm also going to do I like metaphors. I'm going to do a metaphor. So Sam and Stacy have volunteered to help me out. So you've signed up for some mild irritation. Yay. Okay. No, keep no keep your laptop. You you don't need yours. Okay. So what I want you to do is I just want you to poke him in the shoulder. Just like don't start yet. Okay. <laughs> what I want you to do is I want you to find pictures of cats on the internet and just screen cap them and put them in a folder. Okay. So and I need a timer. Who wants a time for me? Time two. Okay. So when I say go, we're gonna do two minutes. If this gets too annoying, you can tell her to stop. If he tells you to stop, you stop. Okay. All right. And just keep poking. 
Just at a, like a nice medium rate, you know, not terribly hard, very whatever. No, if 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 if, if, if he wants to opt out, he can opt out, but it's it's up to you. All right, and you count, you count how many pokes. All right, so you ready? Time ready? Okay, so go. All right, so while they're doing that, I'm going to tell you about my metaphor. So my metaphor is, is privileges like browsers, right? <clears throat> so um, if you're a front-end developer, you probably, you probably have had this experience where you've made this site, it's beautiful, you send it to the client, the client says, uh, it looks kind of funny in IE. <laughs> it's, it's a little off. And if you're really lucky, maybe you're like, well, you know, I don't support IE, so whatever. <laughs> <laughs> too, too bad. Use a different browser, right? So, so, <laughs> but, you know, if you have a good browser, like, it's a great experience, right? The site loads fast. It's responsive. It's beautiful. The, the fonts are beautiful. Like, everything is smooth, right? But maybe... Maybe you, you've got like the IE7 view of life, right? You can still get the information that you need, but like, eh, it's a little off, you know, the graphics are kind of messed up, like the fonts look a little, eh, whatever, but you can still get by, right? So, but the more, you know, so the more uh, intersectional, you know, marginalizations you have, like the more wacky things can get, right? So then, you know, it's like, now you're in IE6, I don't know if that's supposed to be the phone view, I don't know, like, what is the menu doing? You, you know, maybe you're in quirks mode, like, it's hard to even find a bathroom, like, what, what is going on? Um, so, we're looking at the same things, but we don't see them in the same way. And the difference is that when you're, you know, when your client calls you up and says, well, it looks like crap and IE, like, you were kind of expecting that call, right? <laughs> like, you, you know, you know that, like, IE7 is not where it's at, and you're like, you know, you make the decision to like go spend the time to fix that, or two minutes? All right, time. You made it through the whole thing. How many pokes? 156. 156, okay. So who's, so you, you have a calculator on that? Okay, so 156 pokes times 365 times 32 years. Just hang on to that number. So what this was about is this is, this represents, he's trying to do a job, right? He's trying to focus on doing a job. But he's getting distracted by this job by like all these distractions and irritations and like things unrelated to this job. And he can choose to try to keep focusing or he can choose to deal with the distraction. But either way, productivity probably suffers, right? Would you say that? Would you say that productivity probably wasn't at its best I was with the? If doing like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you're like, what's going on? Should I deal with that? I don't know. I really need to get this done. So that's kind of how. That's kind of how a lot of people go through life. They're trying to live their lives, and do their jobs, but you got to deal with all this extra shit. So, this is me at DrupalCon. Denver last year, it's like suddenly everybody's like touching me. I'm like, why are you, why are you touching me? You know? Uh, I asked some people on Twitter, like, what's, what's some stuff that you deal with uh, just because, you know, because you're X, because you're a woman, because you're whatever. So these are some of the responses that I got. <clears throat> um, this is super common. It's like, oh, are you, are you here with your husband at the developer conference? No? Um, this is a friend of mine who's like, oh, you know, maybe her adult life doesn't look like 2.5 kids and a husband. And, you know, she gets some pressure about that. Um, this is also me uh, at my work camp. Last week at uh, WordCamp Seattle, which was awesome. But I went to developer day and the guy who opened the door was like a security guard. He just kind of looked at me like, what are you doing here? I was like, WordCamp? All right. Like, you know, that's, that doesn't make me feel welcome. So <clears throat> these things are going on. And, <clears throat> you know, if you're not aware of these things or you don't know that other people are dealing with things, you might be the person that, like, makes somebody snap, right? Um, 
So what's the number that you came up with? Uh, 1,822,080. Okay. So the, the reason I picked 32 is because I'm 42. And so I figured, you know, generously speaking, girls age 10 probably start to get harassed on the street or start to experience, you know, some BS. Um, so that's a, that's a big number. Um, and even like a really conservative, let's say, you know, 10, 10 things a day that like piss you off or kind of take you out of your zone or whatever. Um, that's still a lot. That's like a lot of extra stuff. Like you're not being paid for that, you know? So this is why like, this is why we get back to like, why are you so angry? Well, because this, that adds up. It's like it's uh, also known as like the, the thousand tiny paper cuts, right? It's like things just add up and add up and add up. And then, you know, in all innocence, you ask some black woman if you can touch your hair, and bam! <laughs> no. There'll be a pop quiz later about when it's okay to touch a black woman's hair. <laughs> there's, there's one possible, possible instance in which you could do that, that I can think of. It would depend on the day. Okay? So... You're all here because you, you care, right? So how, how can we keep from making things worse? What do we, what do we wanna not do? Okay, so there's some common, uh, common things. Derailing, tone policing, mansplaining. Okay, so I'll explain what each of those are. Derailing, man, I'm really pissed off about blank. And then you respond in some way that has nothing to do with anything that I said, right? Just completely like shuffling the point. So I, I sent this very poorly researched tweet uh, the other day, you know, because there was, there was something Barack Obama account tweeted about 50 years of the Equal Pay Act. <laughs> 50 years of this law that's supposed to make it so women get paid the same as men and we're not quite there yet, right? And and the response we got is like, well, what's your, what's your source? What's your source for that tweet? Did you did you research that? Like, I, I think it's really it's it's it might be like ninety six, you know, for our industry. I'm like, well, what if your daughter doesn't go into the tech industry? You cool if she makes seventy cents compared to your son? If you're Hispanic women, it's, it's fifty cents. I'm pretty sure about that. Like, it's fifty cents for somebody. Like this. What's your source? That's not the point. The point is like, there's inequality happening and maybe we should try to deal with it, okay? Uh, here's another favorite. Um, and this was actually in reference to, to Pygate. There was a lot of, you know, policing of like, oh, she should have done this, she should have done that, you know? And, and the thing about telling people how to respond when they are oppressed or victimized in some way is that they're gonna get a really different response than maybe you get for speaking up for themselves, for, you know. So we have to like really strategize and choose like what am I willing to risk today? So, <clears throat> you know, Julie's saying like, hey, maybe sometimes you don't confront these things because you, you get a violent reaction. And this guy is, is really offended because now like, well, all men are so lowly that like, we're assuming they're violent. Well, no, not all men are violent, but we don't know that. You don't know that. You're in a dark alley. You know, you're at a bar. I, I went to, I don't go to bars much, but my sister had her 30th birthday. <clears throat> so I was in a bar and I went to the bathroom and a woman came in behind me carrying her drink. And I instantly knew that she was carrying her drink so that nobody put something in it while she was away. Like that, these are the realities that we, we live in. <clears throat> Tone policing. <clears throat> God, I really want to be on your side. I really, I want to stand with you. You're just so angry. If you could just be nice, you know you catch more flies with, with honey than with vinegar, right? Right? Um, so, but now we know like the reason people are angry is because of the, you know, 50 million pokes or whatever, right? <clears throat> um, so, yeah, at some point like people get angry. It's, it's okay. Like, it might be directed at your group. Doesn't mean it's directed at you personally. Doesn't mean you're a bad person. 
Like, I think we just have to kind of accept that, like, when people get victimized over and over again, yeah, they're gonna get, they're gonna get mad. Um, so I put this link up here. I story. I got into, I got into a Twitter fight the other day with someone who's on our side. Right. This is a guy who organized a uh, a little meetup in the Bay Area about like how do we get more women into tech. And yeah, you know, I still got into like this big Twitter fight with him about like about this. Like, you, you know, you'll bring more people to your side if you're not so angry. Well, you know what? Sometimes it's just about taking care of yourself. Like, if you do, if you, people who stuff anger, right, those are the people who, like, end up bombing things and, like, shooting up schools, right? You know, it's not, it's not healthy to do that, right? So, so you don't want to tone police. You don't want to tell people how to feel about things. Sometimes you just, like, listen. If you want to be, you want to be a good friend, you want to be a good ally, just accept that, like, people are pissed off and you listen. <clears throat> All right, so we have mansplaining. Wait, wait, I can <laughs> see what you did there. That is good. Um, this is an awesome tumbler about this, and and we just had this this great demonstration, right? So I don't I don't even need to go into that, like you know, and and you know you know I say mansplaining because that's kind of a popular term in feminism, but this could be anything, right? This could be white splaining or straight splaining or you know I complain a lot. I complain a lot. Like for every tweet that you see from me about like, oh my god, there's so many white people, I can't do that. <laughs> like that's like you know how when they say like for every like letter that a politician gets, like that represents like ten thousand people who didn't write. So for every time I tweet about something like that, that represents like the hundred and fifty times that I just thought it and didn't tweet it. Okay. Uh, and more often than not, what I'll get is, well, you know, it's not that bad because. Or it would, could be way worse. You could be, blow, you know, like, it's not, it's not relevant. Like, don't tell people how to feel about things. <clears throat> All right. So now I've totally bummed you out. What, what do we do? Um, it's kind of a, a mire of quicksand, right? You want to be, you want to be cool. You want to be open-minded. You want to be an ally. Um, but you're probably going to screw up at some point, right? Like, uh, I could have an actual bronze medal in the Oppression Olympics, and I still screw up and like piss people off, right? So here's here's some some stuff I learned. Like, one, you gotta you gotta not just you just gotta let it go. Like, you're gonna screw up. I'm gonna tell you how to get through it. Okay, it's it's not it's not as hard as the internet makes it seem. All right, so. <clears throat> um, you know they have those mantras, like those little memes, right? Did anybody learn stop, drop, and roll when they were a kid, right? If you're on fire, stop, drop, and roll. You know why they drill that into you? Because when you're on fire, <laughs> are you going to be thinking rationally? No. So you need an instinctive reaction that is going to help with the problem, even though you're on fire, right? And you can't, you can't really think. So, and Jess gave me this, so I, I used to leave the house, like, I would leave my keys, or I'd leave my wallet, I'd leave something important, like, every time we left the house for, like, the first year. So she was like, all right, here's your mantra, keys, wallet, phone, right? You do not leave, you, you, keys, wallet, phone, that's your mantra, you say to the door, and, and lo and behold, I can leave the house and, and mostly have my stuff. So this is kind of what you need for, you, know, you screw up, somebody calls you out on something, Right? Your instinct is like fight or flight, get defensive. Oh, I didn't do it, I didn't mean it, I didn't. Blah, 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 blah. No. Okay? I'm going to give you a three step plan. Stop. Shut up. <laughs> just, just take a breath. Don't speak. It's fine. Okay? Listen to what the person is telling you. Okay? The first step is essential for the second step to be successful. Like, um, and I have a great story about this. Um, so one of my axes of privilege is that I'm pretty able-bodied. Uh, and I was in the chat room and I said something, oh, that's so lame. And somebody said to me, lame is ableist. I was like, what? Okay, well, it's a chat room, so that makes it easy to shut up, right? Just like, just move your fingers away from the keyboard. Just, All right, cool. So it doesn't, it doesn't really matter whether I agree, right? 
like if I want to be a good person, a nice person, if I don't want to hurt people's feelings, I can stop using that word. It's fine. It doesn't really cost me much to do that. Now, in my head, I had this whole thing. I was like, I mean, label. I never heard that before. I don't even know what does that mean. I'm like googling. Like, what is that? But you know what? You know, what I used to hear in college all the time, high school all the time. Oh my God, that's so gay. Outrage. Fire. Like, I'm so pissed off. Like, I just, it just took me a little bit to make the leap. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what you think. If you hurt somebody's feelings, it's their feelings. They get to decide whether you hurt them. So if you care about that person, just do, stop doing what they're asking you to stop doing. All right. And then, of course, the apology. People have so much trouble with the apology, but it's really, it's not that hard. Um, the apology just has to be sincere. Like, if you, if you did this first step, you did the second step, you understand, like, no matter what your bubble tells you about what you did and, oh, you didn't mean it and, oh, you're, you know, you're a good person, none of that really matters. If you just apologize, I'm really sorry, I'm going to try not to do that again. Uh, this magical thing happens where you get to move on. <laughs> you get to move on with your day, right? This is not what we see on the internet, right? What we see is, hey, uh, you know, I really wish you wouldn't say that. I find it offensive. Well, let me tell you why it's not really offensive. And then blah, 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 blah right? That's what we see. Like, that's the example of, right? But we need, but, but it actually, it's happened. I've, ex I've experienced it many times. Like, I, when I was in college the first time, at the U of O in Eugene, there were 50 black students on a campus of 18,000 people. And I invited to be in a video talking about what it's like to be a student of color on campus. And so while I'm being interviewed by my friend who works for the school, a Native American woman, I said something about being low on the totem pole. <laughs> <laughs> on video! <laughs> about race! <laughs> It's awkward. It's awkward. It's not great. And we were good enough friends that her response to that was to kick me under the table. And then I gently, you know, wrapped my head on the desk a couple of times. And then we moved on. I'm here. I live to tell about it. It's okay. All right. So, and then, so uh, this happened the other day. Julie graciously agreed to uh, be my example. Uh, she deleted the original tweet in which she used the word lame. I think in response to one of my tweets. And so I, I gently reminded her that, you know, uh, you really shouldn't say that. And she's like, oh, sorry. It's all right. So we have oops, I screwed up, we have apology. And then, like, we, we move on. It's okay. Uh, all right. So, so now you know, like, you need to go find some, some new people, right? You know you're going to screw up, and it's okay, because honestly, no, no matter how bad it is, if you really apologize and try to do better, like, you, you can get past it. <clears throat> All right, so now you want to evaluate, like, what, what does my world look like? Is, there, is it all just like people who are just like me? Because the whole thing about expanding empathy is like figuring out some other people's experiences. So you look around, evaluate, evaluate your circle, you know, branch out a little, right? <laughs> Might seem a little dangerous. <laughs> Might be a little scary, but it could work out. It could work out, okay? Baratunde Thurston, awesome, awesome dude, comedian, author, wrote a book called How to Be Black. So if you find yourself in the unfortunate position of being black and friendless, you go to Facebook, you search for black people. And especially, you know, a lot of you are from Portland, and I cannot be the only black friend. For all of you, I'm, I'm busy. So I, I actually don't recommend that you, that you use Facebook for this, but I think that, that Twitter is an awesome vehicle for this. Um, and there are other awesome ways that you can expand your circle without being creepy, right, and stalkery. Uh, you, twi Twitter's great because it's asynchronous, right? You can follow people. They don't, they don't care, right? As long as they're not protected status tweets, you can follow whoever you want. Um, <clears throat> you can read 
some books. If you look at your bookshelf and all the authors are, are white, they're all guys, like branch out. Read How to Be Black. It was awesome. It's hilarious. Um, if you want to get formal about it, there's a group called Uniting to Understand Racism. They do a six-week discussion series where it is literally OK to ask all your dumb questions about why you can't touch black women's hair. Like, it's OK. <laughs> They've created a space for that, right? I actually went through this, and it was really good. Um, there's a race talks dialogue at the Kennedy School every month. Another great opportunity where you can go and you can learn about the history of Portland and why, why there's so few black people here. Where do they all go? Why didn't they come in the first place? If you're into fiction, Octavia Butler is an awesome, awesome writer. Um, and you know, there's a lot of groups. Um, Code and Explode. You can you can come to Code and Explode. It's a tech-centered uh, group for women. You can come as the male plus one of a woman. So that ensures it's always a 50-50 ratio at best. Okay. So those are all the. Uh, all the different things that you can do. I don't know why this blank orange slide made it in there. Oh, that, that's why. Awesome, awesome people to follow on Twitter. Anita Sarkeesian. This guy, man, I, I, don't, I don't even know how I found this guy, but he just like, he just lays it out. Like, if you want to learn about racism in America, you just go on these rants. And he'll just drop all this stuff. And, and I have to kind of take it in little like tidbits because, you know. Um, Julie, awesome feminist developer. Um, Revision Path, who's doing, doing those interviews. Uh, you can find out about some black developers doing cool stuff, black designers doing cool stuff. Um, Tiffany is a black woman developer living in LA. She's got a whole app that she's working on. Uh, she's awesome. <coughs> Melissa, uh, I think I tweeted one time, just like, just go read everything she writes. It'll make you a better person. Like, she writes just amazing feminist critiques of all kinds of stuff. And uh, this chick, you'll see in a couple of days, because she's keynoting this conference. And she's right there. <laughs> <laughs> and you should follow her. <laughs> you should follow her on Twitter. So. In closing, um, being a good ally is, is a process. It's not like you graduate and then like, oh, you're an ally. Like, it's not, <laughs> it's not this permanent label that you get to attach to yourself. And actually, you don't even get to decide. The person that you're being an ally to gets to decide whether you're doing a good job or not. Um, so listen. Listen to what people are telling you. Listen to what other people's experiences are. Uh, Share what you learned. Someone asked before this started, like, how can we get the people here who need to be here but aren't here, right? So that is your homework if you choose to accept it. Uh, tweet and blog and talk in person to people about things that you learned here. Um, and speak up for others. You know, like a lot of us get tired of doing the 101 thing, like, um, you know, just those basic, basic questions that you go through life answering over and over and over again. This happened to me uh, last week at WordCamp, and I, I literally like punted it to my to my Twitter people and said, "Does anybody have some resources to share with this person? Because I can't. I'm done." Um, so you can be that person to uh, to help. So thank you so much for coming. Uh, again, this is me on Twitter, and I put I this post is not filled in, but. A lot of the articles and people to follow on Twitter and books and stuff, I will put uh, at that link uh, right after I have a nap. <laughs> so, thank you.